Hey, thanks for dropping by for my daily devotions. And it is Monday, April 24th, 2023. You can look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, Luke chapter 15, Psalm 132, and Ezekiel chapter 25. And let's, uh, you know, there's a passage we read through this yesterday. Uh, it's 2 Timothy 2, 11 through 13. This could be an ancient Christian hymn. But listen, this is called a trustworthy saying. Here's a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. You surrender to Christ, the idea. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. There's some great truth. You get the whole gospel in those verses. It's powerful. Uh, let's take a minute and pray, and we'll jump into the rest of the word today. Father, speak to us. And change our lives by the truth we find in your word. Uh, give us the grace to hear you. Apply it to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us fresh and new. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3. I read better with my glasses off. Doesn't make sense. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over weak-willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth. Just as Jonas and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these men opposed the truth, men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. But they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone." You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Let the Lord rescue me from all of them. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Never forget that. <laughs> That's a big deal right there. While evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continuing what you've learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture, this is important. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The scripture equips you. Now Luke chapter 15. These are the three parables of the lost, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. This is a great chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light up the, the lamp, sweep the house, search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is more rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And then the parable of the lost son. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and 
hired himself out to a citizen of that country and sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to be fi to fill his stomach with the pods and the pigs were, that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men <clears throat> have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to my father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate for this Son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son who was in the field, when he called, the, meanwhile, the older son was in the field. Uh, when he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come home, he replied. And the father, your father has killed the fattened calf because he has, has him back safe and sound. The old, older brother became angry and refused to go in, so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your, proper, your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, You're always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because... This brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. It's all about, you know what? This is, this is about celebrating because people are restored to the Father through Christ the Son. That's what it's about. That's what God wants to see happen. And then Psalm 132. O oh Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured. He swore an oath to the Lord and made a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or go to my bed. I will I will allow no sleep to my eyes, no slumber to my eyelids, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard it in Ephrathoth. We came upon it in the fields of Jair. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. May your priests be clothed with righteousness. May your saints sing for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed one. The Lord swore an oath to David, a sure, a sure oath that he would not will not provoke. One of your own descendants I will place on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and the statutes I teach them, then their sons will sit on your throne forever and ever. For the Lord has chosen Zion he has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned, for I have desired it. I will bless her with abundant provisions. Her poor will I satisfy with food. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints will ever sing for joy. Here I will make a horn grow for David and set up a lamp for my anointed one. I will clothe his enemies with shame, but the crown of his head will be resplendent. And then Ezekiel chapter 25. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say to them, hear the word of the sovereign Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Because you say, aha, over my sanctuary when it was desecrated and over the land of Israel when it was laid waste and over the people of Judah when they went into exile. Therefore, I'm going to give you to the people of the east as a possession. They will set up their camps and pitch their tents among you. They will eat your fruit and drink your milk. I will turn Rabbah into a pasture for camels and Ammon into a resting place for sheep. Then you will know that I am the Lord. For this is what the sovereign Lord says, because you have clapped your hands and stamped your feet, rejoicing with all the malice of your heart against the land of Israel. Therefore, I will stretch out my hand against you and give you as plunder to the nations. I will cut you off from the nations and exterminate you from the countries. I will destroy you and you will know that I am the Lord. 
This is what the sovereign Lord says. Because Moab and Sire said, look, the house of Judah has become like all the other nations. Therefore, I will expose the, I will expose the flank of Moab beginning at its frontier towns. Beth, Beth Jeslamoth, Beth Maon, Maon, and Kiriathaim, the glory of the land. I will give Moab along with the Ammonites to the people of the east as a possession so that the Ammonites will not be remembered among the nations. And I will inflict punishment on Moab. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says, because Edom took revenge on the house of Judah and became very guilty by doing so. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will stretch out my hand against Edom and kill its men and their animals. I will lay it waste, and from Teman to Dedan, they will fall by the sword. I will take vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they will deal with Edom in accordance with the anger of, of, and my wrath. They will know my vengeance, declares the sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, because the Philistines acted in vengeance and took revenge with malice in their hearts and with ancient hostility sought to destroy Judah. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I'm about to stretch out my hand against the Philistines and I will cut off the Carathites and destroy those remaining along the coast. I will carry out great vengeance and, and on them and punish them in my wrath. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I take vengeance on them. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you for the clarity of your word. Help us hear you. Uh, apply it to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us different because we heard from you today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.